what are the ones that you recommend or what are the, what are the, the different vitamins and minerals you recommend people get tested for? Do you have a kind of a, a Joel Furman, like top eight or top 10 list? I have a top six list, but let me give you the top three list right now, because yeah. um, it's the primary nutrients that are, that are not as optimized on a plant-based diet that we get better absorption from animal products or, or seafood are B12, zinc, and DHA, EPA. Those are the three primary concern, right? Mm. The K2, which we get, is still somewhat controversial. We don't know if we make enough K1 into K2 in our digestive tract. We might. You know, there's not as much evidence, but the but we know that zinc supplementation in the elderly lowers risk of pneumonia and breast of prostate and breast cancer, for example. And the and we know that we get um, almost double the absorption of zinc from animal products compared to plant products because of the phytates that bind zinc, and we get less zinc absorption with aging. That's so these things are pretty so it, so there's some concern about that, but it is hard to measure zinc because zinc in the bloodstream is not an accurate indicator of zinc needs. So even though I'm suggesting a little more zinc might be indicated, we can't really test for that to see if it's indicated like we could with B12 or the, with DHA EPA. With B12, you know, we're, we all should be taking some, but some people as we age may need more than others. Some people may need to take extra and that can be ascertained by doing a blood test. And the blood test to ascertain that is a, called a, is a homocysteine and a methylmalonic acid can ascertain with those elevate in with B12 deficiency, because you could have a B12 running 300, 350, and you don't even know if that's lower. That may not be low for you. It may be okay. That's mm -hmm. where you run, you know? Yeah. I, I, I just had some blood work done not too long ago, and my B12 was 375, which is actually a, a lot lower than it has been in the, the last time I had it, which was five years ago, and it was 950. So I was right. kind of surprised. Yeah. So we don't know if 375 is low or not. It may be all you need. And to do that, getting an, if an MMA, a methylonic acid, was elevated, that would tell us you, more, you should probably take in more to push it up past 375. But if the MMA and the homocysteine are good, then 375 is enough for you, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you had, the level was like seven or 800, you wouldn't need an MMA or, M, or homocysteine because then the level of B12 being above 500 is not going to, you're not going to have a, you know, you're not going to have to recheck it with another blood test to see if it's accurate or not. You right. follow me? Yeah. Yeah. What about, uh, so you mentioned those were the three, the, the B12, the, I think you said the, uh, the, the zinc and the DHA EPA. What about iodine? What about D? Yes. But, yeah. But I, iodine and D, you know, D is the sunshine vitamin. Yeah. And um, yeah, I do think people should supplement to avoid excessive um, burning of their skin, you know, in the sun. But that, again, can be just easily checked with a blood test. Those needs are more easily rechecked with a blood test. And we could monitor. So based on a person's skin color, genetics, and sun exposure, they can adjust their vitamin D level to make sure they're in that favorable range. And the, and you, but you don't want to take excessive amounts that drive you into a – because some people think as a little is good, more is better. And, you know, so when the more is better thing, they say – and then some people say, look, taking D, vitamin D is bad. Well, that's because of people taking too much. But so we're taking – saying here that um, – probably levels between 25 and 45 on the blood test are probably the most favorable range. But some people get crazy and want to drive their blood level above 50, or yeah. they get panicky if their blood level is one point or two points below 30. You know, they're, they're like, they're trying to, they're, they're get too, um, too aggressive with the supplements. You know what I mean? And, and with most supplementation, too little could be bad, but too much could also be bad. So it's a sweet spot for most of these things. And that's where we can measure blood. We do. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you kind of, I know you, in your book, you mentioned that, you know, we must always err on the side of caution. Right. And when you say that, are you referring to like, maybe that's a good indicator to supplement? Is it to, to know what your numbers are? What exactly does that mean? Err on the side of caution. It means we don't want to have deficiency or excess, right? So we want to take a conservative amount, like you're saying iodine. Now us, we're not eating seaweed and we're getting some iodine in our diet, but we're not using salt on our food. And unless you're a regular user of kelp or seaweed, you could require more iodine. So we're not gonna give people, you know, 500, 1,000. Some people have to take grams of iodine. The RDI is 150 micrograms. Mm. So if we're gonna supplement with iodine, we don't wanna excessively supplement with it because just because, a li just because having low levels might be 
putting you at risk doesn't mean that taking more, too much is going to be good for you. Take if you need to supplement, supplement with a conser- most cases a conservative amount, and that's what the how the RDIs could help us. So the RDI for iodine is about one fifty. Um, micrograms a day. Yeah. So if you had 300, it's not going to kill you, but don't take a, you know, 500, 1,000, because too little iodine can cause hypothyroidism, but too much iodine can also suppress the thyroid and cause hypothyroidism as well, hypothyroidism. Right. You say that um, the lack of greens and beans in our diet is uh, has an impact on our DNA that is similar to that of smoking uh, or radiation exposure. That's pretty powerful, pretty powerful statement. And it's not surprising to me because when I look around me, unless you're like you or me or people, let's just say the the thousands that are following uh, a a dietary pattern that's similar to ours, most people aren't eating beans and they're not doing greens. So they're, it sounds to me like they're in trouble and they probably have no idea that it's as, it's as serious on their DNA uh as smoking yes and also that um green vegetables are the largest um pay the largest impact on our immune function and support the growth of the healthy bacteria that line the digestive tract and the wow. intraepithelial lymphocytes that are behind the villi of the small intestines these think like projections that line the intestines house all these lymphocytes right behind them to be the first defenders of the castle you know, of, of infection or of toxins, and those, the ability of the health of the body to defend itself and to filter out toxins or uh, microbes is dependent on green vegetable intake. Wow. <laughs>